steps on a career path is a challenge for everyone. Whether you're entering the world of training and careers for the very first time or making a career change. It's like really like scary because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I'm not looking forward to it actually. <laughs> no, I'm not looking forward to joining the workforce. I think applying for work is quite scary. It's a little bit daunting re-entering the workforce after a two-year break away from it. In this program, expert career advisor Sarah McIndo from Careers New Zealand will explain how to make the right steps when getting your first job, re-entering the workforce or changing careers. Hello, I'm George Keenan. I'm year 13 at Ottawa College and I want to know how I can get my dream job. And George is in luck because Sarah is an expert oh in gosh, helping people Sarah. plan their career. George, can you just tell me a little bit about the career ideas that you've got at the moment? Well, one of them is music teaching at secondary level. Okay, yeah. And another one is something in like the graphic design or animation area. Okay, so where did that kind of that interest in the um, the music side of things come from? Then? Well, I come from quite a musical family. People like teachers and career advisors are big influences on young people's career choices. But statistics show that parents and family are the biggest influences. That doesn't mean that we want to do what our parents do, but that we get most of our ideas and support from our family. He was um, the dad to my great-grandfather who was the composer in the Cook Islands. It's a musical side of the house. Yeah, musical side of the house, <laughs> along with the piano and all that kind of stuff. You can see like a painting is from my auntie. She's done a, a lot of the paintings in the house were actually made by her. And this is some artwork I did um, last year for some art practical. Last Christmas, mum actually got me a nice new laptop. Okay. George's mum, Lucianne, has helped give George's career a head start in graphic design. But talking with your parents about career choices can be tricky. So what does mum want George to do? <laughs> Make lots of money and not have to work very hard for it. <laughs> no, really, I think as long as he's happy in what he's going to be doing. Yeah. I can tell him what I want him to be and to do. Yeah. However, at the end of the day, it's got to be his decision because he's the one that's got to do the work yep. and put the effort in. OK, so the first thing we should do is some research. So when it comes to the, I guess, the preparation for your job search, one of the key things that a lot of people tend to leave out is the, the do your research part. And by that I mean, you know, find out about the company or the industry or the job type that you're looking at. And to be honest, the best way to do that is to talk to people who are working in the industry or doing the job that you're interested in or that you're going for. Another great place to start your research is at the Careers New Zealand website, which has New Zealand's most extensive range of job profiles. We're the leading providers of career information and, and advice in New Zealand. So yeah, we connect with various experts and in industries and employers across the field to provide information that's meaningful and purposeful for the people of this country. The job profile page will give you information like the training you need, pay and progression. It will also tell you the skills and abilities that are best suited to people in the job. So have you got a CV at the moment? Um, no, I don't actually, not just yet. That's all right, we can, we can do that. <laughs> it's not a problem. To make it easy, Careers New Zealand has a set of great downloadable CV templates. Should I put in, like, my work experience that I've had before into a CV? Yep, absolutely. George's part-time work and other activities give him great transferable skills that he can include in his CV. Is there anything else I can get for you? No, that's lovely. No? Thank, Thank you so much. Much. Work ethic and teamwork skills from the cafe are great transferable skills. Plus his painting, acting and music interests back up the creativity needed to be a graphic designer. Just build the bridge for the employer between what what you've done, so for example being a prefect, and the skills um, or the experience that you've gained from that. Oh. So it might be that um, rather than just putting prefect, you'd say, um, you know, gained leadership skills and um, communication skills from, you know, acting as prefect. Yep. Yep. So, the trick with a CV is to research the job and target your CV to the job that you're aiming for by highlighting the skills and abilities that are useful in that particular job. When adding referees, two to three is enough, but check that it's all right with them first. He's fun. <laughs> he's easy to work with. Yeah, he's fun. And he does his job very well. What shouldn't I put in a CV? Um, on the whole, I'd say leave out anything from your CV that doesn't relate to your ability to do the job. 
It's not necessary to include photos, age, religion or marital status. The ideal CV should be neat, to the point and no longer than two pages long. The CV is your marketing document and it's the most important marketing document that you're, you're going to put together. Think American Idol, you know, you've got 10 to 12 seconds in front of those judges to really make an impression and help an employer to see why they should hire you. I know some employers ask for a covering letter. Um, yes. What is a covering letter? Um, I'll tell you what, that's probably quite a good question to maybe um, put to our web chat team, if you want to have a look at that. Oh, okay. Web chat on the Careers New Zealand website connects you online directly to a Careers New Zealand careers advisor and can be used to find immediate answers to any questions about the career hunt. A good cover letter basically tells the employer why they need to look at you. Oh, okay. Oh, and she gave you a smiley face. <laughs> the covering letter is absolutely essential to have with your CV. So every CV should go out with a covering letter, no more than a page. And the point of the covering letter is to act as bait to interest the employer to read through your CV sort of in greater depth. But beware, once you start marketing yourself to employers, you're not the only one doing research. They'll be researching you. And everything you've ever put online is fair game. Busy photos from the weekend, is that how you want your, your potential perfect job boss to be, you know, seeing you? Um, and things like, even simple things like on your CV, what kind of a, an email address have you got? So for example, if you've got king of the slackers at yahoo.com, yeah, well, let's think about what that might say to an employer. <laughs> Next, George needs to work on his pitch so that he can quickly sell himself when he's face to face with a potential employer. So these are all the sorts of things and, it, and it's hard to think up on the spot yeah. and that's why it's so important to actually do something like this before you're in a situation where you pick up the phone yeah. or before you're in a situation where you're in, in, in an interview and an employer's looking at you going, so George, why should we hire you? <laughs> After some practice with Sarah... Excellent, okay. And researching the companies he's aiming for, it's time to hunt for work experience in the real world. All right, so this is your top five companies wish list then. Yeah. Excellent. What we're going to do is start from the bottom and work your way up, because that way you get a little bit more practice on these companies before you come to your absolute number one. You're yeah, right. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Good luck. <sighs> Uh, I'm, I'm really keen to learn more about graphics and animation and I'm hoping I can gain that through some work experience with your organisation. Nah. <laughs> nah. Okay, that's alright and that's why you start with the bottom first. Yep, okay. Okay, so getting knocked back is part of the process. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. Alright. Alright. Bye. <sighs> yeah? Sweet! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Really good. Cool. George has hit the jackpot. Work experience at TVNZ. Ooh. Coming up, a chance to see how the national broadcaster works from the inside out and how to tackle the job interview. George is at TVNZ to meet art director Jacob Slack. He's here to learn about the graphics department and how to make the best impression Jacob, Jacob, in a job Jacob, interview. See, I'm gonna come in and see what our graphics department's all about. Cool, show me how you do it. So, welcome to Studio 4. This is where the news happens and current affairs shows uh, oh, wow. are all made. So on this side we've got breakfast at the moment and on this side we've got six news. Look at that. So all these cameras over here are robotic and they're all controlled by one operator. Really? George is in the building and now he's truly inside the TVNZ machine for use in the graphics department later. So this is MCR, which is the master control room for TVNZ. So all the satellite feeds from around the world oh, wow. are coming into here and all the feeds going out as well, so you can see the news there. Yeah, okay. So this is our graphics department. We look after everything in TVNZ that's to do with graphics. So that's including all the promo graphics, all the channel imagery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also do title sequences for programs and adverts for external clients as well. Oh, okay, cool. Um, this is Mark. He's going to look after you for a while. Hi, George. I'll catch you later on. Sweet, cool, thank you. 
what we've got here, what we're going to do is just, you've got a green screen of you, and we're just going to cut you up from the green screen and put you on to a TV2 styled um, background. Oh, cool. So, how did you get into this job? Uh, well, I did a uh, course at um, the Christchurch Polytech, and then oh, wow. uh, a job came up. Um, here, when I sent in my CV, I had to, I had to put a showreel with it so they could see what I had made, and you know, so it backed up what I said in my CV. Mark has the advantage of being able to back up his CV with a showreel, but if you don't have that option of visually showing your previous work, your referees can have the same effect. Did you do any research for this kind of job at all? Yeah, yeah, I had a look online, um, and I. Watched, uh, watched the TVNZ channels, made sure my graphics, you know, what they, what they were after and what they had on there already. So, Mark applied his research by tailoring his showreel to what he thought TVNZ would want. Yeah, and that might have been one of the things that helped me get the job. Yeah, pretty much. So, what was the interview like? Pre pretty tough. Pretty yeah. tough one. Lots of questions, hard questions. It lasted a while as well. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty cool. So, with graphics, we don't take people on from straight from school. Most of them go through a training course or a university course yep. before we take them on. But what we've done is we've set, a, set up a mock interview for you, just to put you through your paces and give you some practice, okay. because interviews are pretty terrifying, and the more you practice, the better you get. Just a little anxious about it. It's OK, because people, even with years of experience, still find this quite a terrifying process. Jacob and Amon Doyle, a senior TVNZ designer, have done hundreds of interviews and know exactly what they're looking for. But interviews aren't scary if you're prepared. If you've got an interview, it's absolutely key for you to be able to do some research. In the times of Google, you'd be silly not to have a look at the company, get a sense of what's important to them, what's happening in the industry as well. Interviewers will start assessing you the moment you walk in the door. One of the key things is um, actually body language, um, because the body language and how you present yourself can actually tell an employer so much about you before you even open your mouth. So good eye contact, firm handshake, a smile goes a long way. It just it tells them without words straight away, I could be a good team member, I could be you know, a good person to work with Monday to Friday. Thanks for coming in. We've got a few questions to ask you, so just sing out if you've got any questions, and Amon here will be taking a few notes as well. Generally, the first questions in an interview are to get you warmed up. Can you give us a bit of a background about yourself? Well, I, I live in Hibiscus Coast, up in Red Beach. When asked about yourself, talk about personal and professional goals, relevant study or work, and what you do in your spare time. But think about this question as an opportunity to relate your interests back to the position you're going for. I've always been like a, a visual learner. Your CV is designed to get you the interview, and you will discuss the skills you've shown on paper, but the interview is also to see how you react in the flesh, how you present yourself, and how you might fit in with the team. What qualifications have you got in this industry? I don't have really much experience in like working for a graphic design area. If you don't have experience working in the position that you're going for, focus on the transferable skills you have. But I have, I've taken art at school and I took art design so I'm like kind of familiar with like art in technical terms as well as like a practical form of like painting and drawing and stuff like that. George is getting across important information about his creative skills and abilities. One of the big do's is to think about beforehand what are the things that I most want to get across through the interview and you know what might they ask me back. So do you have any other questions? Uh, One of the key things that does often happen in the interviews is that when the interviewer turns around and says, so, do you have any questions? It's a bit like rabbit in the headlights. And the person often will just say, oh, no, no, that's fine. But really what they're, what they're asking is, you know, what, what's your interest in the company or, you know, in the job? What kind of people fit into this kind of area? Have at least some questions that, that you'd like to sort of find out more about. The Careers New Zealand website has loads of great hints and tips for answering questions in the interview. Thank you. So, how did I do? I thought you did really well, especially for your first interview. You were really confident, you really thought about how you answered those questions, which is excellent, and you were really upfront and honest with us, so. I thought you were really relaxed, and that's a really good thing to be in an interview. Coming up, 
some advice for mature career changes and people re-entering the workforce, how not to get your dream job, oh! body language, and what to do if you get psychometric tested. Now we are looking at how to market yourself to an employer. It's like making a sale, and the product you're selling is you. So we talk to some of New Zealand's most important recruiters. My name's Martin Cook. I'm the Talent and Reward Manager for Coca-Cola Amatil New Zealand. Anna Campbell, I'm the General Manager Human Resources for Warehouse Stationery. I'm Nikki Winnard. I'm the HR Manager for Syme Derby Motor Group Retail. My name's Steve Haddock, Company Director, European Floor Toppings Limited. Hi, I'm Raymond Dobby, owner and director of World Moving and Storage. We asked them about the worst interview gaffes they had ever seen. You would be amazed. So someone turning up in shorts and a t-shirt to an interview, um, you know, it's just the simple things. People being 20 minutes late and then they turn up and they, you know, still think that they might get the job. Don't smoke a packet of cigarettes before you come in for an interview because it, the smell is really puts you off. And he's looking scruffy, rough as guts. I'm just not interested. The chap that came in and walked straight into our cupboard. People turn up and they actually can't remember the job that they've applied for. He was stoned. He happened to be wearing a t-shirt that was a man sitting on a toilet. Uh, he obviously wasn't going to work here. Getting to an interview stage with a company like Coca-Cola, you know, you've done really well. Some sales jobs or call centre jobs, we have 500 people apply for those jobs and we interview three or maybe five people. So if you get to that stage, it's very serious and you need to take that interview seriously. To have a serious attempt at the interview, we asked body language expert Roseanne Getty for some information on good communication. The study of body language is about what we term in communication speak, non-verbal communication. And non-verbal communication makes up about 80% of what people interpret from us. So it's big, it's huge. There's an old adage that you will have heard called, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So, break down the interview. Well, the meet and greet is about your first impressions. And you've really got three aspects to first impressions. The first one is your handshake. Not a bone-crushing handshake, not a handshake, but a nice, firm handshake. Eye contact, direct, and a genuine smile. Not that, you know, I'm feeling nervous smile or any of those, but a genuine smile. A handy tip for establishing eye contact is to try and see the interviewer's eye colour. It's also how you sit on the seat. You know, if you're slumping, that doesn't give the right impression. If you're too straight jacket and look like you're really nervous, that doesn't help. So it's the ease with which you sit. I would encourage at the beginning of the interview to sit somewhat forward and look interested, and then slowly but surely move yourself back into a comfortable position. Speed of, of speech, you know, when you're nervous, you sometimes get the, 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 and you go too fast or you start the ums and the ahs. You need to just slow up and deliver deliberately. Sound confident. Another one about the do's and don'ts are all those nervous things that happen when we're in interview and, and you know, you get a question, you start going like this, you know, mm, I'm not sure. You gotta watch. Open hand gestures is the key. That's good advice, but what other advice is available if you're re-entering the workforce after time away or you want a career change? I've been working for 12 years and I've been out of the workforce now for about two years. It's a little bit daunting re-entering the workforce after a two-year break away from it. So interesting to see what I need to do to get myself back in the game. Because it can be a difficult emotional step to make, career advisors like Sarah McIndoe from Careers New Zealand give support and advice on where to start. I'm looking at a career change. I'm looking forward to getting back into the workforce, mm -hmm. having some adult company. Yes. <laughs> and just seeing what's out there, really. Um, I'm not certain which step, which way to go about it at this stage. So normally what I do um, for a first session then is to do a little bit of a stock take. First, prioritise what you want from your new career. Probably not as a full-time basis, because mm -hmm. um, I obviously have Ruby to look after at the same time. Mm -hmm. Next, assess what skills you have that you can transfer on. 
organisational skills, communication, interpersonal skills. Then research the job opportunities available that suit your priorities and skill set. Contract based work and temp based work might quite suit you. If you want ideas when looking at a career, Careers New Zealand has a great interactive tool for brainstorming. CareerQuest was launched online um, last year. It's one of our most popular tools. It's um, 78 questions that you go through to identify your um, skills um, and your subject interests. And it will give you a selection of jobs at the end that you may or may not have considered as different options to follow. Now Megan has decided that temp work is right for her, she can customise her CV and start the attack. Hi Megan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Gay. Come through. When looking for work, you may want to consider a recruitment agency like Drake. Working across a huge range of industries, they are asked by employers to recruit the best people for the position. So what are the benefits of joining up with an agency? The greatest benefit really is time. It's going to save you a lot more time because we've got lots of um, companies that we are working with and dealing with and it's going to save you time rather than doing it yourself. Yep. In the recruitment process, you may be asked to take any of a variety of tests. Megan has been given a psychometric test to complete online by psychologist Dion Andrews. Psychometrics is around, I guess, measuring someone's, or elements of someone's psyche. So that's things like uh, personality, values, motivations, uh, aptitudes. Then Dion follows up the online test with Megan. That helps me formulate a tentative theory about what you are like. Yep. Psychometric testing is an extension of the interview. It helps the employer get indicators of your personality. So, key points, in terms of interpersonal style, your profile is someone who really um, doesn't really seek the opportunity to influence others. You prefer to be the follower rather than the leader, not someone who really enjoys the whole prospect of selling or, or indeed telling others what to do. Yep, that sounds right. A psychometric test might seem intimidating, but it's not a test you can fail. Think of it as a bit of an adventure, really. You get to look at yourself in ways that you wouldn't normally look at yourself. I mean, if you're at a party and someone came up to you and said, describe your personality, then you might invoke four or five dimensions. Whereas with the personality profiles, um, they can provide answers around 20 to 40 dimensions. So it's a much finer grained picture, and it's very interesting. The career journey is a challenging adventure, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So what advice can we get from Graham Benny, the Chief Executive of New Zealand's career advisory organisation, Careers New Zealand? One of the most important things we can do is to actually sit down and plan out how we want to work, how we want to use our skills, what we're good at, and plan our career out over our lifetime. This can actually help us to make better decisions around jobs, training, and ultimately will improve our, our own ability to earn money and uh, get the jobs we want. Research and planning are the keys to success all the way along the career journey. A good CV should be concise and tailored to the job you're going for, and it should always include a cover letter. It's important to make a good impression at the interview, but there is more to it than dressing well and answering questions. Employers will be judging you on how you act, your appearance and attitude. Careers New Zealand has everything you need to know about the career journey, including support and advice when re-entering the workforce or changing careers. And their website is New Zealand's most comprehensive careers resource. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.